It was a walkie-talkie animal, isn't it? Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. You security? Yeah. yeah. Where's your badge? You're meant to have a badge. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. You're supposed to display it, yeah. Where are you from? Sorry? Where are you from? Georgia. 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 How long have you been here in Ireland? Right? How long have you been here in Ireland? Oh, two years. Two years. Yeah. Two years. Is the war over in Georgia? Is the war over in Georgia? Is there a war in Georgia? Uh, did you did you come to Georgia uh, from Georgia to Ireland for, for work or what 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 brought you to Ireland? English goes really bad when you ask the hard mm-hmm. questions. You don't, uh, you don't speak English now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was loud, is it? So if there's no war in Georgia, yeah. If you don't speak English, how did you get a, a job in an English speaking country? It's a genuine question. How can you do security if you can't speak English? You can't communicate with people. Yeah. Who who, yeah. who, who employs you here? David who, Mooney. Who uh, who is your boss? Who who employs you? David. Who gave you the job? Hey Mooney, was it? So this is Callum Smiles for Callum Smiles Media, and today I am in Ireland. More specifically, I am going around the Dublin area looking at accommodation that is being used to house migrants. Now, the Irish immigration issue is a very hot topic right now. So today I am focusing on the accommodation. I'm going around the Dublin area to what was just an army barracks, what was just a field, what was an elderly people's home. And behind me here is the Selbridge Manor, which has been in the headlines very recently, as it was just a very nice hotel. However, now it is housing migrants and there's been a lot of controversy, especially when it comes to violence. Now, initially back in 2022, it was said there was going to be up to 350 Ukrainian refugees housed in this hotel. However, having been around the area myself, I can tell you, it's not Ukrainian refugees. Recently, there has been a serious assault on a seven-year-old child where, if you go and look on Google and type in Selbridge Manor Hotel, it doesn't come up on the news feed on Google. So this is something that has been kept secret by the mainstream media. Not only the mainstream media, one of the main internet search engines. And the question I wanna know is why? So today I'm going to be joined by Philip Dwyer and Ferg the Patriot as they're going to show me these different areas so I can have a good look at exactly what is going on when it comes to housing these migrants and just how many are there. First up was a repurposed elderly living facility on the outskirts of Dublin. So if you were to walk in the opposite direction to me now towards this gate here, you'd probably think you'll walk up towards maybe a barracks or even a prison. You know, when you look at the security here with the cameras and the strong gates, the sort of gate that you couldn't just drive straight through, you would think that there is something of great importance behind here. However, this was an elderly people's home. Now, Ireland has an ageing population problem. The number of the ageing community is outgrowing the number of the younger, the, the birth rate. However, here in Ireland, the government seems to be putting more emphasis and more resources and funds into foreign nationals that come here as so-called asylum seekers and refugees by moving out people from these elderly people's facilities and moving in refugees. Now, you can't go in there. It's, it's heavily guarded. It's, it, it is an extremely secure facility to the point where locals, locals here in Dublin have tried to move around here and well the guard will turn up pretty quickly so i'm going to put my camera away before the guards turn up and get me in bother next they showed me a barracks out on the edge of the wicklow mountains in county kilbride where there are apparently some very unsavory characters it's quite busy what can you tell me about this place yeah, well, we think it's partially used by um, by the army, but partially used to house refugees. Uh, it came to our attention probably early last summer. 
maybe you know spring last year but um we've uh, we've established the fact that an irish military base is being used to house these these people um it can't be good for national security either like if our, our, our army these places are are there to train up our security forces so um yeah that went out that kind of went viral it's still being used and um, now like I mean, we did speak to people who were in there people who said they walked from afghanistan i've never met any any refugee yet who's able to give me a, a, a genuine story that you could, could convince you that they were f- uh, fleeing persecution and war um, it's all he passed through i mean 20 safe countries if that's what he did Mohammed so, Gump. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and look, I mean, he came across to be a nice guy and everything else, but obviously coming here for all the uh, the great welfare and the free stuff, the free accommodation. Um, so now it's still been used. Now lately we're hearing reports, um, unverified by the way, but we're hearing reports that there's been incidences of sexual assaults in other direct provision centres around Ireland. And uh, what they do is, is that they, they collar these guys and they don't deport them or lock them up. They, they're moving them to this, this camp here. I've also heard uh, of a, a security um, company owner who got in touch with me, um, uh, which is an impeccable source as far as I'm concerned, and he said he wouldn't even put staff in there. He was asked to do it. He, would, he refused. He said it's too dangerous. The individuals that are in there, he said, would, and he's been an ex-army and he was all over the world doing peacekeeping stuff and seeing some bad things. He said, I wouldn't put staff in there. He'd be afraid for their safety. That's how uh, he felt about it, and he's in the he's in the business, let's say, you know. Who is behind, well, all this, the the, the buying of these centres, the bringing the people in? Who who do I have to speak to to find out exactly what's going on? One of the main people at the moment is Dave Mooney and his partner called Christine Andres. She's a Romanian. They had a, a cafe, the Oigo Cafe in Sally Noggin, where they were making food and bringing to these DP centres. He's a manager of countless DP centres over here now, including here. Cruxling, Ablana Avenue in Dunleary, even the Crow Park, famous Crow Park, and he has uh, immigrants going in there, the whole like he's providing field. He provides the workmen to do up the places, and he provides the security for it. So he's one of the main planters over here at the moment. He was, um, he's a very dodgy past, as Phil said earlier on. Um, he was in witness protection years ago. The government wanted to give him a certain amount of money. They didn't come across with it. So he came out of witness protection and went to the MSM and uh, done a big story about that. And now he seems to be working in lockstep with the government to absolutely destroy this country and put every w- woman and child here in the most gravest of danger. And he has to be stopped. Mm-hmm. Who's paying for this? The Irish people. Taxpayer. Tax so much like outside of the processing facilities that used to be military bases in the UK, when you try and ask questions, Security often turn up and uh, shut the gates, stopping any form of dialogue where, well, just citizen journalists and citizens alike just want to find out the answers and know exactly what is going on. Not only that, but where their hard-earned taxpayer money is going. On to the next place. Flood Cross in Nays is designed to fit 985 occupants in a makeshift encampment in a field near Nays in County Kildare. However, much like the Selbridge Manor Hotel, local residents were told it would be mainly Ukrainian women and children. This remains to be seen, and there has been a continuous protest at the site since finding out about it. Tell me exactly where we are and what is back there. It's probably, Colin, the most extreme thing I've seen as regards the plantation of Ireland, uh, where they're planning to put 985 people in, and it'll be mainly men, uh, military age men from Middle East, Africa, Georgia, Albania. And that's what the worry is here for people. I mean, we're hearing rumours and speculation that the, the, the amount of men that they've been bringing in here, they've no children or, or wives with them. This is very sinister. Like this, why? Why is it that these men? They're all coming in well dressed, well groomed, and they're planking them into these places. Um, and it's like not only seven or eight miles away, there's another massive place there at Punchestown Racecourse. It's famous. There used to be concerts. ACDC played there. There's been um, major horse racing festivals there every year. Um, they're going to use that area there. It's a big land area there. There's supposed to be um, warehouses and stuff, and they're going to use that as well. So you're talking in this small area, a, a circumference of about 10 to 12 miles, of maybe three to four thousand uh, 
unknown, unvetted men. We've had a bit of a, an interaction there with a, a Jeep coming out. We asked the guys to speak to us about what's happening inside. You know, one of them said he signed a non-disclosure agreement. Can I ask you a few questions about what's going on inside? Are you, uh, you can't. No, I signed an NDA, but... No, you signed an NDA. Why do you need a non-disclosure agreement if you're doing uh, legal, proper work um, on behalf of, of whatever private entity he's working for? You know, so again, it's all just... Uh, beyond that gate, the Irish taxpayer again is paying for this. There's a village here, uh, Cara, just beside this place, and it's the population is only just over a thousand people. Yeah. And they're wanting to move a thousand undocumented foreign men in here. So the people are just are terrified for the children. And was anyone them? ever asked? Um, no, they weren't. Um, they never are. You know, it all happens kind of in the middle of the night. Uh, they busload these people into hotels, warehouses, into areas, um, and they try and do it as um, stealthily as possible, let's say. So I've driven around Dublin, Nays, Kilbride and Selbridge and spoken to many of these people across all these areas. There's a common theme amongst the Irish nationals that they are genuinely concerned that there is a population displacement going on here in Ireland because of the large influx of foreign nationals being imported from across the world. Not only that, they are being given accommodation and provisions that not even the Irish nationals themselves can get. The thing that bothers the Irish nationals the most is that they're not even getting the answers as to why this is happening from those who are imposing it. Today I have seen a land that used to be a field. I have seen a nursing home that used to have elderly patients. I've seen a hotel that used to have paying guests and I've seen a barracks that used to just hold soldiers. And I've seen an island that used to be Ireland. The thing that all these things have in common is that they are now full of migrants. How many of them are legal, we don't quite know. But the question remains, how many of these are genuine refugees? This has been Callum Smiles for Callum Smiles Media, covering the immigration issue here in Ireland.